What's going on, everyone? So according to ESPN, Jason Kidd, the head coach of the Dallas Mavericks, uh, is one of the uh, leading candidates that the Lakers are hoping to pry away and make the head coach. Now, many of you may remember Jason Kidd was a part of Frank Vogel's coaching staff when the Lakers won the championship in 2020. Uh, he was a guy that I've talked heavily about how important and significant he was in that championship run for the Lakers. He was the guy. For the Lakers, he was kind of the glue guy. He was the guy that LeBron and Anthony Davis respected. He was the guy that was able to tell LeBron and Anthony Davis off, and you know, kind of getting them and challenge them. Where it's not a coincidence that as soon as Jason Kidd leaves, Frank Vogel just starts going downhill because Jason Kidd, when he was gone, and even Jared Dudley to an extent, but more so Jason Kidd, when they left, Frank Vogel was essentially on an island by himself and. He started losing the locker room and all that stuff. Uh, so Jason Kidd would be a solid candidate, in my opinion. Um, he's clearly improved. He's clearly gotten better as uh, as his years as a head coach have gone on. Um, but when you're talking about that, I just I don't know how realistic that is, right? Like it kind of feels to me, if I'm being honest, like it's just like all the top coaches that make sense for LeBron and that have LeBron ties and connections, they're just kind of like, oh, this guy, right? Because again, it's like, even with the Tyron Lue stuff, right? I would love Tyron Lue, but realistically, he's probably not coming over, right? He even addressed and said that he'd like to stick around with the Clippers. Steve Ballmer's got the deepest pockets in the NBA. He'll write him a fat check and pay him whatever he wants to get paid in order to stay as the head coach, right? I just don't necessarily see Tyron Luke going anywhere. And Jason Kidd, so Jason Kidd is in a similar boat with uh, Tyron Luke, right? Uh, Jason Kidd, he has one more year left and then... He, he can get an extension, and I'm sure Dallas would want to work out for the extension. But Mark Cuban and Jason Kidd, they had the connection. They had the relationship. So, yes, Jason, uh, Mark Cuban's still a part of the Dallas Mavericks, but he's not, like, the main guy. So is it possible that Jason Kidd goes, ah, I get the opportunity to coach the Lakers, you know, be with LeBron? Because they are friends. They do have a relationship, right? Could Jason Kidd kind of request his his way out and kind of move over to the Los Angeles Lakers? I mean, it's a possibility. I think Jason Kidd might be a little more likely than Tyron Lue would be. Uh, but again, like Dallas is in the second round of the playoffs. If they win, which I think that they might beat the Thunder. And so if they end up beating the Thunder, now they're in the conference finals. Like, are they really going to get rid of Jason Kidd? I mean, it's a possibility. Um, but I just, again, I just, to me... It, if the Lakers are really focused on all these other coaches that already have jobs, I kind of feel like they're already like behind the eight ball a little bit, right? And I get like the coaching candidates that are out there right now are not great, right? Like I'm not a big fan of the coaching candidates that are available right now, right? It's kind of like pick your poison, but like, you know, like it's just like which guy is not going to be worse. Like <laughs> it's kind of how I feel a little bit. Um, now, obviously, once we get through this NBA season, once we get through the playoffs, right, start seeing that coaching carousel that ends up happening, a guy or two ends up getting fired, that may make more sense. We'll see, right? Like, maybe Dallas does lose in the second round. What if they lose in just horrific fashion to the to the Thunder? Do, do the Dallas Mavericks go, ah, let's get rid of Kid? I mean, you never know. It's a possibility, right? But ultimately, I think, you know, it's kind of like Jason, or not Jason Kidd, uh, uh, J.J. Redick or The Field. It's kind of what it feels like to me. kind of feels like that's what this is ultimately going to boil down to, is like, do the Lakers take a flyer on J.J. Redick, or do the Lakers go with like a Frank Vogel, Kenny Atkins, uh, you know, somebody along those lines, um, you know, like Terry Stotts. I, like, there's options, but again, I, I just don't, not like super sold on any of the options. I mean, at the end of the day, we just need somebody that is serviceable. And in my opinion, like all the guys that are available are upgrades and better than Darvin Ham. It's just how much better, right? How significant would they be? Um, now, ultimately, at the end of the day, it comes down to the roster and the shaping of the roster and whatnot. And look, if the Lakers could get Jason Kidd, I'd be all for Jason Kidd, right? I've talked about like his history and, you know, there, there were questionable, like, can this guy actually be 
a, a quality head coach in this league at one point, right? Like, you know, he goes to the Brooklyn Nets and it was a rough go, right? I mean, he was creative, you know, with the, the cup, the water cup spill. And he's even done some very creative things with Dallas, right? Like he definitely has the IQ. He has the creativity. He has a lot of the things that you, you kind of want to see from a head coach. And he's gotten much better at the X's and O's and gotten much better at just the game management from a coaching perspective. Uh, so like Dallas Mavericks, Jason Kidd, yes, I, I, I don't hate it. Sign me up. Like, it, like I think that that would be a better option than everyone else that's available, right? Because you've seen the progress. He's learned basically everywhere you go. Like, you know, he goes from the Nets to the Milwaukee Bucks and the Milwaukee Bucks stint was better and he started kind of trying to figure stuff out, but then ultimately he ends up uh, getting fired from there and then goes to the Lakers as the assistant. And again, that was kind of like the big thing. Like, And there were even talks about like maybe Jason Kidd moves into it, but then his Dallas connection is his Dallas ties and stuff. And then, you know, you have um, Mark Cuban who was like, hey, come on over here. I'll give you a head coaching job. And it's like, we don't know what we're going to do with Frank Vogel. So he ends up departing. He ends up going over there. And you now like, the, it was up until this year, right? It was kind of touch and go. Not so much with him as a head coach, but just like the roster and Luca, and, you know, uh, they go and land Kyrie and then they miss the playoffs. And, you know, it's just kind of one of those things where it's like, does Dallas extend him if they don't extend him or if they don't look to extend him? Because there isn't any necessary word about it. But as we like to see, or as we see, right, you hear nothing about Tyron Lue getting extended. As soon as the Lakers <laughs> come into the picture, the Los Angeles Clippers are looking to extend Tyron Lue, and there's all the talks conversation. To me, this is, again, feels like one of those things where it's like, I want a new extension. I want to stay. They haven't offered me one yet. Put this out there in the media, right? You see it with agents and players and organizations and all kinds of stuff. What do they do? They use the Lakers... To, to get what they want, right? Because the Lakers are going to generate news, it's going to generate buzz, it's going to create the stir, and teams are like, ah, we don't want that guy to go to Lakers, or ah, we don't want, you know, we don't, we don't want to be the team that, you know, hands the Lakers another championship, right? So that's where this kind of feels like to me. This kind of feels like, ah, this is just the your typical run-of-the-mill, just throwing this out there, and then, Later today or tomorrow or something like that, you're going to hear the traction of like, you know, Dallas Mavericks want to extend Jason Kidd and Jason Kidd's going to be in an interview and they're going to ask him and he's going to say, ah, oh, you know, I want to stay in Dallas. I want to get a new contract in Dallas. I want to stay with Dallas. Right? Again, it just this just feels to me like LeBron, who has connections to LeBron? Here are all these guys that tied to LeBron. Those are all the guys that are going to be on the list, right? Like, like the Lakers want to get somebody that LeBron is happy with and, you know, that LeBron's content with and LeBron will buy into. Um, so, and again, like, I imagine that the Lakers end up signing somebody sooner rather than later. I'm not saying, like, they're going to get somebody. Like, they still have to go through the interview process. I imagine they wait till the season's over to kind of see, like, who could potentially become available, right? You don't want to hire a coach, and then let's say Jason Kidd does become available or Tyron Lue does become available, and it's like, ah, oh, man, we just hired Mike Bootenholzer, and we could have signed Tyron Lue, right? Like, so they're going to wait. They're going to be patient, but... Before we get to the draft and free agency and all that stuff, I would imagine that the Lakers end up having a head coach, signed, sealed, delivered, ready to go, uh, so that head coach can start working with the the organization to, okay, which guy do you want to draft? If we draft guys, a free agency, which free agent do you like? You know, fit your uh, schemes, your plans with this Lakers team. Oh, also, uh, you know, we're, we're considering trading for Trey Young. What are your thoughts, right? Or we're going to go trade for this guy. Or we're going to trade for this guy, right? Like, you you want your coach to be involved in all that. You don't want to just, like, do everything and then you hire a coach and it's like, okay, here you go, figure it out, right? You want the coach to kind of get there, like, guys that they prefer, guys that they like, that they see as, like, hey, this is a guy that really fits what I want to do. I mean, you even saw it with Darvin Ham, right? 
Lakers sat down with Darwin. Darwin got to make some, like, you know, insertions of like, hey, this is what I want. This is, you know, I, I'm looking for guys like this type thing. Here's here's my vision. Here's my plan for the team. Pick me up a couple of these guys. And you saw that, right? You saw the Lakers go and, you know, bring back Dennis Schroeder last year, right? Like, they go and get like a Torian Prince and a, and a Cam Reddish type guy. Little did we know that Darvin Ham was going to overplay those guys, but like, you know, like again, it's the idea of like, hey, what are guys that you like? Um, but Jason Kidd, if if he is available and he does become an option, I, I like that. I like that option. He's done a really good job of just kind of utilizing getting them. I mean, look at like, ooh, is James, or not James Jones, um, uh, is Derek Jones, like he, uh, you look at him, right? Like he was like a journeyman and he went from like, Basically being a nobody at the end of the bench to like being one of their biggest pieces and like one of their biggest factors on both sides of the, of the basketball. Right? And it's just like his athleticism and all that stuff really helped. Like Jason Kidd was able to kind of draw that out. I could see him doing that with a couple guys on this roster. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. Pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? Kind of feel like I do. Like this is just kind of the, the rumor mill game. Um, this is just Jason Kidd's people probably throwing this out to get a new extension. Uh, or do you think like, no, he's a real option. If he does become available, is he a guy that you, you want the Lakers to sign? Like, would you prefer Jason Kidd over anyone else? Or do you think like, nah, like stay away from Jason Kidd, go get somebody else. Right. But anyway, again, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. So we enjoy these types of videos and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.